Hey everyone, welcome for downloading this special holiday edition of the Retro Gamers. Ho, 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 Larry here. What did you call me? I called you my friend. Oh, okay. I, I heard something <laughs> different. Uh, and Anthony here. <laughs> What's going on, Ant? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Larry. This I feel is like, it. Uh, I feel like whenever we, we, we get, uh, whenever it's Christmas time, we're like seven years old again. It's, it's the most, next to WrestleMania, it's the most wonderful time of the year for me. Well, that's because we haven't grown up and we still get video games for Christmas. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, fingers are crossed. Fingers are crossed. Um, this is actually, yeah, dr- what? Santa brought something? I, I'm hoping. I don't know. Because when we're recording, it's not Christmas, but when this drops, it is December 25th. That is so. correct. Uh, thank you for taking time from your day with your family to listen to us for a little while to enjoy Christmas cheer being spread around the land with two of the happiest, hap, hap, happiest group of people on the planet. That's right. Or you're welcome for this distraction from your family <laughs> on Christmas during what I'm sure is, no, you know, no doubt, uh, a very fun-filled holiday uh, festivity that you're in. <laughs> Ah, Christmas times of of years gone by, sitting there watching the Yule log on TV, and Some, you know somebody so, somebody drinking a little too much eggnog and <laughs> saying the wrong words, other people being absolutely inappropriate, and you know just just that kind of that kind yep. of there's always that kind of Christmas too. Not not getting the gifts you want versus getting gifts and like what what is this? Exactly. Thank you, Mima. That's the, right. That's what we're here for. We're, we're here. We're here for that. You know, what? Thirty or forty-five minutes, or however long we go today. Um, you know, to to distract you from whatever's going on, um, or at least that's how I like to think of it. <laughs> I just want to make a quick note. Uh, friend of ours, um, Frank from the Better Half Podcast, put this post up, basically in a nutshell, saying how like who wraps or do you? I should say wrap. Christmas presents that go into the stockings. Oh, I, I saw that post. And the answer, but for me, the answer is no, I don't do that. Yeah, neither do I, or neither would I. <laughs> I, feel like that's, I feel like that's extra work. I thought stockings were invented as a cheap and easy way to wrap things because you just stick a bunch of stuff in the stocking and you're done. Yeah, no, it's like, like, like the last minute stuff that you throw in there. Exactly. Did you ever put stockings up for your pets? Oh, I got two up right now. <laughs> Snow, Snow, Snow gets a pink one, and uh, Link has a blue one. <laughs> yeah, we had. Oh, the, yeah. Link should have a green one, but that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we always had stockings up for the for the pets, and the one the couple years we had uh, Snowball, which was our our albino hamster. We had a little stocking, a tiny, tiny oh, little man. stocking for him. <laughs> I think we did that too for my sister's uh, hamster. <laughs> It's like that. I, what you know? Not that. Not that they knew anything. Yeah, about, so. having a good time. So yes. But uh, you know, today we're going to talk about some uh, Christmas Christmas games, which not a lot of them are out there, but there's enough to uh, to kind of huddle around the television. Yeah, there, there there are a few. I can't. You know, not 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 a ton directly related to Christmas per se. Um, but you know, to your point, a handful, and then. Um, there were, you know, and then something else to talk about, and um, we'll. Uh, I I was just remembering it now, um, but um, uh, I posted uh, I posted a, a link to it yesterday, like old school Christmas ads. Oh yes, yes, Christmas ads for video games. So I think like maybe we can touch on that because I post I posted one and it actually got really good responses. Um, so I think. Maybe a little, uh, maybe fun to talk about those a little bit as well. No, no definitely go check it out on the Facebook page. Uh, you know, Retro Gamers Podcast. You know, I was looking at those ads. Um, I don't know if you want to jump into it now, but there was there was one that you put up from uh, was it from KB? I can't remember, or maybe it was KB just somewhere. Toys. I think it was I'm K- looking at it right now. KB Toys. I'm pulling it up, and um, it had the there it is right there. I'm just pulling up here. Christmas 1989. Yes. And, you know, showing all the games, the Nintendo, the NES at a uh, wonderful price of seventy nine ninety nine. Yes. Which I an think affordable price. Is actually the going price today. We're back in 89. That was on sale. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of funny. Well, I knew when you buy it today for seventy nine ninety nine, you don't get the box, the instructions. You know, you just yeah. get 
You just get a, a really old, possibly yellow console. <laughs> and, you know, this was all hand-drawn, too. You know, back in 89 for KB, they weren't really taking photos. They were hand-drawing it. I love how the boxes, they show a bunch of titles. Yep. The boxes are pretty much accurate, except for the WrestleMania one. Uh, what, too cartoonish? Well, first of all, I don't think he was wearing red tights on the, the cover. Uh, that's the, a very good point. Of the real box. Um, and then a little bit of a lighter background in the back. Uh, there's Hydlide behind that one. Hoofa. I, th- I think they were going for some color so that uh, yeah. Hulk Hogan would pop. Um, and then I, what I, the thing I want to point out, which I do not remember it being six bucks, but I guess it was. I made a point. Um, the controller adapter, the Bandai controller adapter for the yes. NES. I remember having this stupid thing. It was this clip. This like a like a you, you clip it on to the NES controller, the start, select, BA buttons were all exposed. That doesn't change anything. But what it did was it basically changed the D-pad into a little mini, I wouldn't call it a joystick, but, you know, a stick control that gives you more of an um, eight-way, you know, control direction. And Uh, I I remember getting that. You know, for, for the handful of games that I had, um, and once in a blue moon I'd rent RC Pro Am, it did work. Oh, that's cool. I, I have to admit, though, I also do like the uh, the cartridge holder. Oh, yes. I, you know, I had the cartridge holder. Do you really? Uh, I had, had. I well, no, I know. I, I figured that. No, but I used, Yeah, I think I, I think I had that that specific one. Because it was like... <laughs> it, it, and what's funny is, like, back then, when you bought, like, cartridge holders and things like that. Like, today when you buy them, they're all, like, plastic. Right? Oh, yeah. Terribly like, made. But back then, it was, like, it was wood. Oh, you, you threw it? Like, a, you got a wood holder. Yeah. Yeah, you threw uh, it at your siblings. You were doing damage. Oh, there's no question about it. Like, I could have broken that over my sister's head. <laughs> Would have been awesome. Um, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're going to the ER. Exactly. Hey, you know what? I have stories. <laughs> um, but in that in that KB ad, um, the thing that what, – what I love looking at is, first off, this, you know, your favorite game up top there, Castlevania 2. Yeah. And then – I always love the little uh, the little disclaimers that they throw in there. So, like on this one, it says, um, "Not all titles available in all stores." <laughs> oh yeah. Just so you don't get, just so <laughs> you know, parents don't get your hopes up. If your kid wanted Bionic Commando and it was the hot game that year, yeah, good luck to you. Um, <laughs> but I had the Nintendo Max joystick, which if you don't if you don't remember what the Max joystick was, it was like I don't even know. It was like a Instead of a crosshair, you had like uh, a button in the middle that that was like free moving. Like you can it, roll it, you can kind of roll it around and everything like that. So yeah. you can press it in the direction you wanted, so you can get that eight button press. It was almost almost not saying it, it's not truly, but it was almost like an analog stick. Yeah, it was almost like an analog, um, and it was so terrible. Oh, yeah, I had that controller, too. It was horrible. Yeah, it was god-awful. It did not do anything. It but it had the do- turbo buttons. It did have the turbo buttons, which was great for cheating. Um, especially, <laughs> like, um, you know, if you wanted, I don't know, whatever game. Games where you had to button mash to shoot repeatedly. Um, it definitely helped with those. Yep. Um, and, sa- and saved, you know, and saved you from Carpal Tunnel at, you know, eight years old. Well, not like the, uh, what are they calling it today? Uh, selfie wrist. Do you hear about this? Selfie wrist. Yeah, doctors are now saying. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I've heard, well, you... I've, I have, um, in my left hand, I have text thumb. That's what they were calling this. Oh, I, that's right. Yep. I forgot about text, text thumb. Text them when you're, when, when you're over texting that... with your thumb and you actually, yeah, text them. That's retro. That's pretty retro. Um, because especially back then, because what the the way the phones were, like the 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 flip phones, um, yeah, kids, phones used to flip, and That's right. um, yeah, with the thumb reaching over, that definitely, especially when you had to repeat, because you had to hit a lot more buttons back then to get to some of the letters. That uh, what they call that text when it started predicting T nine. Oh, I don't know. Do you remember that? Like instead of like hitting the button three times to get to like C. You would, I think it was called T9 texting, where you just hit the, you know, it, it kind of predicted texting. But yeah, text thumb was a thing. Now it's selfie, uh, selfie wrist, because, which never dawned on me really. But yeah, when you hold the phone in landscape mode to do a, a mm-hmm. selfie, that's starting to kill kill your wrist. 
um, doctors are saying to get money from the insurance companies. Well, yeah, well, you know, they they, they have to get them somehow. <laughs> uh, going back to the uh, to the article, the now you got to admit the one awesome third party control uh, was it third party? I think it was third party. No, it wasn't. Nintendo put it out. I don't know who put it out. I forgot. The Advantage Joystick. Yes. I Which, think everybody either wanted it or had it. If uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was used in The Wizard, but for a really stupid game. Um, I feel like they used it to play... Uh, right. I think I think Bo Bridges was using it to play Ninja Turtles. No. Oh, no, 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 no. He was using a regular controller. Yeah, he was. Someone was I, using I, it, though. I remember because he woke up Christian Slater. <laughs> yeah. Or he was playing. Um, that advantage... And it was a giant... If you don't remember what it was, it's a big... Uh, they call it a, a joystick, but it's just a glorified um, controller. But it was it was huge. It did have a a controller, a joystick like like an arcade joystick with a ball on top. Yeah. Um, B and A buttons were a lot bigger, so uh, easier to press. That had turbo buttons. That had slow mo, which is just basically it would just hit start very fast, <laughs> which was annoying. Yeah, Annoying yeah, for I was so, just gonna say annoying for those games that made a noise when you when you paused it. Oh yes, <laughs> I actually have. They made the someone made um, the Advantage joystick for mm-hmm. the classic, so oh. I actually do have it. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, it looks exactly the same. So, um, yeah, I remember. Do you remember? And it was the. It may have been the, I want to say Sears put it out, getting the Sears toy catalog. Oh, yeah. Like, There's no question about that. Maybe like right after Thanksgiving, maybe it came out. I think it, yeah, it, it either came out right after or before, or even before. I mean, it may have, I just remember the, yeah. And, and the, the joy of going through that <laughs> and earmarking. All of the pages for the toys that you wanted Santa to bring. Yep. You know, and then and then my favorite part of it though was waking up on Christmas morning to find that you got like two of them. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, although knowing you, you got all of them. Uh, uh, look, household with three kids, household with one kid. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but the that's seri- why, that's why that's why Barbies in my house used to lose their heads. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that Sears catalog would roll around. J.C. Penney eventually put one out as well. I think this was a little better than Sears, I remember. Um, and yeah, you know, as soon as you you're flipping through and and you get to the to the, it was always in the back of the book, uh, yep. like a manga. You would read it backwards. Yes. And well, you're for right. kids, you didn't care about the rest of it. No, of course. Well, you get to the clothing section, depending on how old you are. But. Um, you know, you kept flipping through and just, you're right, Ann, just kind of sitting there, circling. I remember the video game section was maybe two, eventually like four pages because of the number of systems that came out. Well, yeah, as as, as systems came out, yeah. like they they would expand it. and, and But they would li- almost list the games individually. And mm-hmm. uh, I remember when I get the, the, you know, that was almost like the, the, uh, the second option. To find out what games were coming out, you know, your first was like Nintendo Power and stuff like that. But when you were that young, you know, before you were old enough to start buying like Game Pro, even before Game Pro came out, I guess, and stuff like that. Um, to me, the Sears catalog was kind of to figure out what was coming out for the holiday season. Well, and not just what was coming out, but like, um, you know, it would also give you like the the description of the game, so you do what the game is about. Because remember, back then, like you know, when a game came out, it wasn't. They were they weren't established franchises, so you had to find out. It's like okay, you know, I have a game called Hydlide. What what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, it's like what's that game about? You know, or or you know, Metal Gear. Yeah. You know, even when Metal Gear came out, it's like you don't know what Metal Gear is about. Granted, the the cover gives you a little information, but you needed those descriptions, and the Sears catalog would always uh, do that as well. So it wasn't just okay. Here's the name of the item and the price. It's like okay, <laughs> what's what's it about? Okay, now I want this. Give me it, Santa. <laughs> you know, I know we do, we obviously we talk about retro games, but let's just go full retro for Christmas for a moment. What was yes. like the best toy? Not necessarily video game. What was Uh-oh. the best toy that you got for Christmas? I know I'm springing uh, this on you. 
Oh, man. You know I don't like being put on the spot. You know? <laughs> All right. While you're thinking about it, one of my What's favorites. What's the best toy that you did? Yeah. How about you? Yeah. One of my favorites was getting the um, Firehouse Headquarters from the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Oh, yeah. I got that. I remember that. I yeah. had that. Yeah. Everyone had it. Everyone no, no, no. had it. Was it from the cartoon or was it just from it was, Ghostbusters? No, it was definitely the cartoon. Okay. Because I remember the figures because uh, – um, I remember the what, I remember the, the the spinning elevator that went down. <laughs> yes, in the middle. Not only that, <laughs> here's what's so memorable because in my house it only lasted about two days. So, you know, get this giant warehouse because back in the day, folks, they really put a lot of effort into these toys. This yes. thing was huge, almost as big as the. Um, I had Transformers um, Ultra. No, uh, oh man, what was the city called? Fortress Maximus. I had a Fortress Maximus. Uh, I think I got it for a birthday. That thing was... I mean, t- it took me like a half hour to transform the stupid thing. It, it took forever. But the uh, the Ghostbusters house was tall. I would say, I don't know, a couple feet maybe? Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, I was little, so it looked bigger. So anyway, so you had the toy. You had everything on the inside. You played with the figures and stuff like that. Ooh, and those are my alarms are going off. So on top was a graded ceiling. Like, the roof was graded. Reason being... They also sold slime, official yes. Ghostbusters slime. I used and, to have tons of that. Yep, and you would be, and one of the things was you were actually able to pour it on the top of the firehouse, and then it would mm-hmm. drip down, ooze down to cover the inside. Yep. So I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, Slimer got everyone. Ah. Well, at that age, you slime the where uh, the firehouse, but you realize you should clean it afterwards. Uh, yes. I left it overnight, and that stupid slime turned into concrete, basically. Mm-hmm. Destroying the entire fi- the entire action play set. Of course you would do that. T- to say that Christmas week was a little tough in the Mormon household for a young Larry. <laughs> so, it was... I may have been reminded once or twice how I broke my Christmas toy. <laughs> And completely understandable. Oh, absolutely. I deserved it. Oh, God, that was so funny. <laughs> wow. You uh, would do that. I didn't know. But uh, I got I got mine, though. I do remember. Um, I, I was trying to think, and um, and I and I successfully did. Um, <laughs> but one of the one of the best uh, one of the best Christmas toys by far that I ever got was um, Voltron. From the uh, yeah, from the TV show. Now, I loved, loved, loved the original Voltron. Now, yep. granted, the new one on Netflix is from DreamWorks is fantastic. I still haven't watched it. It oh. is fantastic. I, I have I, the the last season just dropped now. Okay, uh, like last week. But I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Um, but when I was a kid, I wanted the Voltron toys, and just being able to open those up on Christmas morning because. They were five separate toys. Yeah, and you needed all five to put together, you know, to put Voltron together properly. I mean, it would be really weird if he was like missing a leg or an <laughs> arm or, or something. So, 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 uh, um, and then uh, I don't remember if it was Mattel or whoever. Obviously, a brilliant toy to sell because every parent has to buy five of them. You know? <laughs> yeah. Nobody's just gonna buy one. Here, oh, here's the blue lion. Good luck to you. <laughs> it's like no, you had to buy all five. And that was the best thing because getting that and then being able to form Voltron. But not only that, but we're also talking the days when these things were die cast metal. Oh, yes. So when you put that Voltron together, I swear, uh, no question, that thing was so heavy, I could have very easily murdered anybody who got <laughs> in the jail. And that would have been the weapon. There's no problem. You, 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 you swung that thing, you were cracking a skull. That and Transformers, they were built to last. Yeah, well, Transformers as well, which was uh, which yeah. was another you know another Voltron. But yeah, but, you Voltron. know, by far and away, like Voltron was probably my favorite toy. Okay. Um, Did you, you ever know, get the? You ever get the second Voltron, the one with the cars? No. Yeah, it was like fifteen of them you had to put together. Yeah, no, no, no. There's only one Voltron. It's five <laughs> lions. They come together. They form Voltron. That's it. No other Voltron. <laughs> Just Power Rangers is like Voltron. Uh, Power Rangers is like Voltron. <laughs> uh, no, Voltron. 
That was a cool toy. I remember that. Yeah, that was a good toy. Um, and then, of course, I think we talked about it last year, but for those new to the to the podcast, you know, obviously the, the games that we got growing up, like I remember vividly, vividly um, for Christmas getting a um, a um, lunchbox. I, like, I open yeah. up the wrapping. I got a lunchbox. That was eight, right? Yeah, I probably, yeah, eight, nine. Um, I'm like, okay, thank you. I forgot who gave it to me. Then I like open it up, and I open it up, and inside was Super Mario Brothers two. Yes. Which at that time, yeah, you know, and then that's when I was like, oh my god. Uh, so I remember that vividly. Yeah. See, and and I wish I can say I remember. I don't remember the video games I got at Christmas that vividly. So it's just one of those things. The- I think I got like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Christmas one year. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely got wrestling games for Christmas. Yes. Uh, no question about that. Um, if I didn't get it, for, if if I didn't get it on my birthday, I got it at Christmas. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely remember those things. Yeah, I remember, and 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 then also just back in the day, you know, around Christmas, because um, Christmas is really the time of year when we were little. That's when we got to stock up on games. You know, yes. otherwise throughout the year, all right, on your birthday, very rare. You know, you you would get a game regularly. You know, they were yes. pricey back then. You know, times were different. Um, but I do remember, like, at the end of the year, like, my dad would get, like, his Christmas bonus. So he mm-hmm. and we'd we'd make the the magical trip to the far off land of the Staten Island Mall. Yes, <laughs> Staten Island Mall, uh, which was like to me was like you know going like around the around the world to this you know place that we've never been to, only get to go to one time a year, and um, you know that was the time I was able to buy wait for it kids two games at once. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, yeah, because uh, to your point, when we were kids, it's like you got you got games pretty much twice a year. That yep. was the end of it. And uh, you played those games to death. I had no choice. <laughs> yeah, because your your entire game library was like, oh, look, now I have eight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This is fantastic. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so that's, you know, Christmases of, of years gone by. But let's m- talk about a few games that actually are Christmas, that are related to Christmas, that were actually made because of the holiday. All right. Sounds good to me. Where do you want to start? You know, let's start with the one that I guess is 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 obvious, the one that um, was based on a movie series, uh, a very successful movie series, and one that does have that holiday feel to it, the Home Alone games. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Home Alone. Home Alone ga- movie. Uh, did it just turn 25, or is it a little older than that? Uh, let's see. Home Alone. No, Home Alone's older than that. Okay. Home Alone, I think, came out in, Home Alone came out in uh, 1990, I want to say. Oofa. Yeah, so it's almost 30. Oh, God. Sorry I mentioned it. Um, yep. so Home Alone, obviously, g- great movie. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. We will allow it. And uh, the games, though, were just... They terrible. were rough. They were terrible. I remember the... First game, well, I don't know if it was on the NES or the SNES one that I'm remembering, and I don't know how different they were, but I remember one of them where you were basically riding around on a sled. That was, I think that was more part two. I th- no, I think that, no, I actually think that was part one no. on Super Nintendo. Here's what, because the Super, what happened is the Home Alone series, which was very, uh, this a lot of games did this. Basically, put out the exact same game on the NES and the Super NES, but obviously okay. graphical differences. And in the first Home Alone, you were basically just running around the house collecting items to then drop in like the laundry chute to put into the vault. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, oh, so, yes, I remember that. Yep. Yes. Um, actually, they even had a Game Boy version which did the same thing as well. So you had three different versions with three different levels of, of, of uh, graphics. Um, mm-hmm. it was, it was fun, but you know, it also kind of, it, it was that, that point where you're like, how is this based on the movie? Like a lot of this didn't make sense. Uh, especially cause it was way more than just, uh, Marvin Harry, uh, in the house trying to get to Kevin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, home alone and then home alone two lost in New York had a little bit of a different gameplay. I think that's where you, you saw the sledding. Um, no, actually it was the Sega Genesis version of Home Alone oh. that had the sledding. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so okay. th- 
Yeah, so they, they changed the game to um, Kevin is now protecting the neighborhood <laughs> instead of just his house. Now and he's community so he's, watch. He's, so he's traveling through the neighborhood by sled, and they give you like a top-down view. That's oh. the part I remember of tra- of him traveling by sled. Um <laughs> And it was annoying. It was hard to control. I remember. I like. I remember playing it. It was absolutely uh, obnoxious. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and uh, let's see. And, and I'm actually looking at a. You know, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page. I just wanted to point this out for the Genesis version. That, okay. Uh, um, that one one reviewer basically said the game was a wasted film license and was I quote grotesquely overpriced and pathetically underdeveloped mockery of a game. Oof. Oof. That one cuts deep. Yeah. That's why That's why I liked it. <laughs> Poor Kevin McAllister. <laughs> well, you know, look, look, you know what? Kevin made a ton of money at the box office. Probably didn't make so much off the video game sales. Oh, <laughs> not, not which so is much. Why, which is why he, you know, which is why he, uh, good old Kevin as an adult is uh, doing Google Assistant ads. I love that commercial. Yeah, it was hysterical. Basically, Macaulay Culkin looking, got the haircut. It looks just yeah. like Kevin McAllister. Yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> also, I do want to give a quick shout out uh, to obviously a wonderful page, uh, which really I think started this whole thing of online uh, video game reviews. Angry Video Game Nerd just recently dropped um, a series uh, video based on Home Alone games, really more of the other games, because um, that's why I, I forgot the Sega Genesis one because he was kind of focusing on the Nintendo ones a little bit. Uh, that the video actually stars Macaulay Culkin. Yes, that that is awesome. I need to watch that. It's a very funny video. Yeah, definitely check it out when you can. So will do. Uh, so the Home Alone games, you know, they were they were what they were. Uh, very odd, cause, you know, bats and stuff trying to kill you. It's weird. Yes, just let alone anything trying to kill you in a kids game. Um, What's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, but then you got some other games, like how can I explain it? Cause they were, they were, fla- there was a, a time for a while where flash games on websites were all the craze. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, snood was like the first one that we all remember. Oh, snood. But then there was a bunch of Christmas ones that would come out and you go to whatever web page it was, just loads up immediately. Then you just, just start playing. One of the biggest ones I remember, which actually not only got a Wii release, Wii uh, version release, got a Game Boy Advance release, no, excuse me, a DS release, also had a movie made, Mm -hmm. Uh, we are talking, or I'm talking, about Elf Bowling. Wait, Elf Bowling had a movie? There was an Elf Bowling movie, yes. Nice. (laughs) That's just weird. That is just weird. Yeah, and basically, let's face facts, Elf Bowling... Is basically little person bowling, <laughs> just with a Christmas overlay. Yes, and the sad thing is, like, did you? I'm trying to remember. Did you throw an elf like down the lane at other elves, or what were you throwing at them? I forgot what it was. Well, the elves were definitely uh, the pins. The pins. Oh, you threw uh, Christmas presents. Oh, that's right. You were a snowman throwing Christmas presents. I'm pretty sure. Weren't you Santa? No, I thought you were a snowman. I feel like you would want to be Santa because I feel like Santa after no, a you while. Were Santa, you're right. Yeah, it just Basically, wants nothing to do with him. Getting his revenge on his elves for maybe not doing a great job this Christmas. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, there have been eight versions of elf bowling. Wow, <laughs> that's insane. Oh, this is hysterical. I'm looking at this right now. So obviously, elf bowling, elf bowling two. Elf Bowling 3 involving slinging elves in Mrs. Kringle's pink bra onto distant oh. icebound targets. I that's, never played that one. That's not even bowling. I want that one, though. Uh, Super Elf Bowling, which is a 3D version. Uh-huh. Uh, elf Bowling 5, uh, bocce style. Yes. <laughs> you play bocce. The elves are bocce balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Elf Bowling 6 now is got to be the epitome of this series. Air Biscuits. I could have sworn I saw that movie. I thought that was part of the Air Bud series. Yes, but what I like is, you know, you're bowling the elf over a mound of snow, which sends up an elf airborne. The elf could remain in the air by using fart power. <laughs> so um, you were using your Air Biscuits to maintain flight. 
Uh, Elf Bowling 7, The Last Insult. That is the best title for any Elf Bowling game that could ever come <laughs> out. Uh, returns it to the original series, but with new modes, uh, stuff and like that. story mode. Yeah. And then, of course, kind of like many horror movies or movies that just don't know what direction to go in a sequel, we get Elf yeah. Bowling, Hawaiian Vacation. Well, you know what? You know, sometimes the elves need a break, man. Bernie needed a break. Jack Frost needed a break. Everybody, look, you Cousin know, Eddie? I, yeah, I, Leprechaun went to space. Why can't <laughs> the elves go to Hawaii? That's when you know when a horror movie, a horror series, jump ship. That, that's very true, because if uh, if a Leprechaun and Jason Voorhees can go to space. And Critters. And Critters. I think that was the one Leonardo DiCaprio was in. Uh, oh, Critters too. yes. <laughs> uh, and then if anyone's curious, 2007 was Elf Bowling the movie. Yes, uh, I, that I completely missed, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> and then we'll various all the ones with Santa and stuff. You can definitely check those out. Um, one Christmas game I want to... Well, I should say this. There weren't... Look, to be fair, there weren't many actual Christmas games. Like, games that were truly based on Christmas. A lot of it was just either around Christmas time or, like, had a download overlay. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorites, I just want to mention, actually, yeah, one of my favorites is, is this, um, homebrew of Super Mario Brothers 2, Christmas mm. edition. It, yes. Look, gameplay wise, it's the exact same thing as Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, so no difference there. But the graphical change that they made with actual snow falling, uh, the shy guys wearing, uh, uh Christmas hats. Mm-hmm. That was whoever I'm, I apologize. I don't have the information as to who who made it, but they did an amazing job at it, and it's just a a fun game to play, um, a game that you already know and love, but just with a Christmas theme to it. Yeah, and what's cool about it is that you know you just showed it to me actually before this before we started recording this podcast because I had not um, seen it before, and it was awesome. Um, I actually want to get my hands on that. Yeah, no, that's that one's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, but we got a quick. You know what? Let's get to. Uh, we have a, a a nice quick list here of some um, you know th- Christmas theme games. Again, some are overlays, some are actual games. You know, kind of yes. get to it and see what it's all about. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm gonna. Why don't we just uh, ping back and forth on this one? Yeah. So, no problem. Um, yeah. So uh, and we just found like again, we just found like a list of stuff. So uh, the first one is definite is uh, Christmas Lemmings, <laughs> which. And I loved the original Lemmings game. I don't know. I don't know how you felt about those, but I actually really enjoyed it. It was one. It was a very interesting. It was a very interesting puzzle type game mm-hmm. where pieces were always moving, so you had to react quickly. Yeah. Otherwise, you're, you're otherwise ultimately based. Uh, you know, otherwise the Lemmings would commit suicide if you didn't uh, if you didn't get them to safety because they just kept walking forward. Uh, you're yes. right. L- Lemmings, I think, was like the first game I ever remember, like on a three and a half. Floppy, yes, yep. I remember. Yes, the three and a half inch floppy. Uh, <laughs> God, uh, um, but uh, you know it was better than the large floppies that we used to play. Uh, like five and a quarter. Five and quarters. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> but yeah, but I remember like when you when, and, but when, and you, when you would buy these games, like it was really special if the game came on like three discs yeah. or four discs because you're like, Ooh. holy cow, this game is like six megabytes. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. But uh, Chris, yeah, Christmas lemmings. Uh, again, it's just taking the lemmings and giving them little little hats and making the levels Christmas themed. So that 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 was actually you know a fun little uh, a fun little game there. Yeah. Um. Another one which was um again not necessarily an overlay, but they threw this together just as kind of like a, a, a just for Christmas. Uh, Christmas nights into dreams. Yep. Now nights into dreams. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, nights into dreams. Is probably one of the best Dreamcast games. Um, not Dreamcast, excuse me, Saturn exactly. games out there. Yeah, and that's what that's my understanding as well. I have personally never played it, but everybody who's played it has said it's like it's just an absolute fantastic game. And now, and now that I have a Sega Saturn, I should probably look for it. Yeah, and you know, Christmas Nights into Dreams was just it was a two level Christmas. It was basically a demo. Um, it was I don't remember what magazine it was in. Well, actually, you know what? I think there was some various ways you could have gotten it, either through a magazine or, like, it was probably bundled with a game or something like that. 
Mm-hmm. So that's you know that's a lot to go through back then to basically for a company to be like, hey, Merry Christmas. You know, just have fun with this. We're going to create a two-level game on a system that's going to take a lot of effort to put into, and we're just going to throw it out there and give it to you for free, which, again, awesome. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, and, again, it's just one of those games where, um, what should we call it? Like, you know, you think of genre genre games that define the system. For Saturn, they didn't have much. They basically no. had this. They had the, the cause Saturn was one of the only systems Sega put out, and possibly the only system Sega put out that did not wind up with a Sonic game, which is probably one of their biggest mistakes. Mm. Um, but yeah, like Night, Nights into Dreams, I think was probably their most well known, and uh, Tomb Raider might be the other one. True, um, and and what I want to mention real quick with this, and again, you know, it wasn't just them slapping Christmas graphics onto an already made game; it was a new story. Um, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the bad guy comes back, the kids from the original game are back, Knights is back on basically a brand new, two level, but a brand new adventure. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. No, uh, kudos to Sega for yep. trying to, you know, yeah, to actually make making a sequel to the game. Basically, it wasn't just <laughs> that game. Uh, moving on this, this one's a, this one's a fun one, uh, on the, uh, Commodore 64. Now we're going way back. <laughs> um, but this was definitely a specific christmas theme game this was called special delivery santa's christmas chaos <laughs> and this was the first game this was the first game ever where you got to play as santa claus that's cool and right and the job your job as santa claus is obviously to deliver presents to the kids and what what you had on the screen was you had like boxes on the screen which represented the levels in the house Mm-hmm. And your job was to get the presents to the Christmas tree, um, and you had to sneak around the house to make sure that you did not uh, walk into any of the children. Oh, which, who, by the way, according to the description, they're sleepwalking. <laughs> they're not walking around looking for Santa. They happen to be sleepwalking. So even if you ran into them, they wouldn't know. They wouldn't see you. Yeah, just sneak around them. Well, he's got a lot of bells on him, so I guess it's hard to yeah. maneuver. But but you know, and then of course, in true Commodore sixty four fashion. Um, the characters are basically glorified stick figures. <laughs> of course. And, like, Santa's not even red. No, I, yeah, they made, they made him white. He looks, uh, he looks, he looks nude. Yeah, he, naked, basically naked Santa running around your house with sleepwalking <laughs> children. You know what's you interesting? Can in, you can fill in the blanks there. <laughs> you know what's interesting about this game? For a Commodore 64 game, there was actually a lot of different elements in the game, like, to do. You know, you, you, you flew around... On Santa's sleigh first to collect the presents, which apparently angels and devils made, not no elves. Um, you, you, you drop the presents down chimneys, but on mm-hmm. larger homes, you get to actually land. Then you enter the house, and that's where you do the yeah. whole thing, like you mentioned, uh, to avoid the kids. So there was a lot of gameplay to this, actually. Yeah, yeah no, it, it, was, it was definitely a, a little more involved. Um, you also had to avoid the fire when uh, going down the chimney. <laughs> yeah, as always. You know, yeah. So it had it had a good it had a good uh, it had uh, some good gameplay. So yeah. So if you're a Commodore 64 fan out there and you're looking for some holiday cheer, Special Delivery Santa's Christmas Chaos is for you. <laughs> uh, next one up here on the list: uh, Duke Nukem Nuclear Winter. It's pronounced uh, nuclear. It's nuclear. <laughs> so uh, this is just basically uh, you know Duke Nukem like Doom like Wolfenstein always had their mods and stuff. This is just basic uh, graphic overlay, um, really nothing new, like no new weapons or anything like that. But uh, you know, basically in a nutshell, aliens, the alien that you defeated in the original game, they come back. They've um, taken over Santa Claus, and then you have a couple of new enemies: evil snowmen. Uh, and then the uh, the feminist elven militia, which is always interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, you gotta you gotta be aware when when el- when elves form a militia, they're pretty dangerous. <laughs> and Duke Nukem's guys make his way to the North Pole to stop Santa Claus. Well, yes, because the alien horde brainwashed him. <laughs> so, uh, but as usual, you, know, you, be- you defeat the game. Duke Nukem saves Christmas, and all is right with the world. Yay. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna jump a little bit to this one because I need, I need to talk about this one. Okay. 
and it belongs on the Christmas list, no question about it. Um, it is the Die Hard trilogy game. Oh, we're going there. Okay. Yeah, we're going there. So, and the reason why I need to talk about the Die Hard trilogy game is because I've been in a heated debate with my coworker that I share my office with. Because <laughs> I am, I've, I, you know, there are two kinds of people in this world. People who think Die Hard is a Christmas movie and people who think that Die Hard is a movie that just happens around Christmas. <laughs> okay. Now, we quick cross promotion. We actually did talk about this in depth on the Better Half podcast uh, that will actually drop. If you're listening to this on Christmas, that episode will drop tomorrow, the day after Christmas. And actually, Anthony was on. So thank you very much for actually being on the show, Ant. You're very welcome. Was happy to join you for that episode. <laughs> um, it's a very special episode that we talk about. A very special episode. But then we talk about how Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So download that uh, when yes. you can. Uh, but you're arguing with your um, with your uh, coworkers. With my coworker because she doesn't think it's a Christmas movie, and I do. Um, and so, and it just so happens that, you know, because it's Christmas time, other people are chiming in on this because we're posting things on Facebook. But I keep getting things that I tag her in and forward to her that show <laughs> why it's a Christmas movie to the point where she's just like, oh, she's like, stop it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you will listen because this is a Christmas movie. This is a Christmas movie. And even 20th Century Fox this year or 21st yep. Century Fox came out and said that. Bruce Willis is wrong because Bruce Willis came out and said it's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> I know what he's an idiot. And then 21st Century Fox re-releases a trailer <laughs> for Die Hard with the Christmas overlay and basically announcing that it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> it also has a Christmas book out right now, a Die Hard Christmas. I didn't know about it's that. Like, yeah, it's called the Die Hard Christmas. It's uh, it's like a children's book, like a Twas the Night Before Christmas children's book with yeah. with like at drawn. Images from the Die Hard movie, <laughs> definitely. One, and it's one of those hard to get gifts this year. So if you find it, get it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so Die Hard trilogy was a game. I had it on the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was. Was it just on the PlayStation? It may have been on something else. I don't remember. Saturn maybe, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. So Die Hard trilogy had basically three video games in it. It was also an arcade game, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, so it had it had a game for each of the first three Die Hard movies. Now the first two Die Hard movies took place around Christmas. Mm -hmm. The first one is mo most most associated with Christmas, of course. Um, but basically, you had three different types of games, um, and the first game was you were running through Nakatomi Plaza, uh, trying to save you know your wife and her coworkers from you know Hans Gruber and all the terrorists. <laughs> And it was great. It was absolutely great. Loved it. The second game was an on-rail shooter where you're taken outside of uh, the airport mm -hmm. to stop the terrorists. Yep. So it was, it was basically just a shooter, uh, which was really cool. And then the third one, which had nothing to do with Christmas, uh, but did have a lot to do with Samuel L. Jackson, was the car racing. It was basically you were driving around. Oh, that's city. right. I remember doing that because I would always drive through Central Park and run people over. But, <laughs> yes, third um, one's in New York, yeah. But yeah, but the, but the first two games were really fun, especially the first one. I loved the first game on that, um, on that, and uh, and it's a great Christmas game because Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I'm in. I'm in on that. Absolutely. Ho ho ho. That's right. I got your gun. So. Um, the next game, I'm just going to keep going because that other, you know, well, I will we'll honorably mention a uh, game, Frosty the Snowman, a.k.a. Frosty's Busy Night. Um, For the Commodore 64. Yeah, just, it was a, oh, actually, I didn't know that. The game was actually packed with an issue of your Commodore magazine. Oh, that's cool. Interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, it's also similar to Dash and Desperados on Genesis. Basically, yep. it's just a race. You and another player split split screen, and you race and avoid obstacles. Pretty straightforward, yeah, but cool. And and if you hit an obstacle, you melt. <laughs> yeah, like the Doritos commercials. Worth it. Yes. Um, this game. I I just want to mention it because I've played this game. I've actually played okay. this game. Uh, actually, I played it last year on one of our live streams. Oh, I did. It's I called. Do not recall that. Yep. Days before Christmas. D a z e. Days Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. This is, from top to bottom, a Christmas game that was made for Christmas. Um, obviously, you play as Santa Claus. Now, 
I didn't understand the concept of the game. I still kind of don't, even after reading the description. But during the game, you play as Santa, and then at points, you play as, like, Demon Santa. Which yes. <laughs> is just very, very Come weird. On, you got it. You have to play as Demon Santa. <laughs> the, this game was more released overseas, not necessarily. We never just got it here in the U.S. Um, but basically, an evil snowman captured all the elves, all the reindeers. So now you got to go raise hell uh, for Christmas to save everyone, to destroy Mr. Weather. <laughs> Evil Mr. Weather. They had to ruin Christmas. Oh, it's that's what he's drinking? So when Santa drinks coffee, he turns into Anti-Claws. Nice. I wonder if, he, if that's as bad as Santa claus um, No, nothing's worse than Santa claus oh, <laughs> uh, When you're Anti-Claws, you can beat, you're invincible, but you can't pick up presents. And you can only attack with your Christmas sack. <laughs> the one with the presents in it. That one speaks for itself. Absolutely. That explains why you can't pick up presents. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a quick game. I do. It was a very fast game. Um, there's sleigh rides in it, boss fights, yada, yada, yada. Days Before Christmas, which if you can get it here in the U.S., it's most likely going to be a ROM, um, you know, based on games that were released over in Europe. Uh, I think it was more Europe than Japan. Uh, but if you can get it, definitely play it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then moving on... Um Another uh, another game that uh, another Christmas game based off of a movie that most people don't connect with Christmas because I'll be honest with you, uh, as much as I consider Die Hard a Christmas movie, I do not consider Batman Returns. You know that's a Christmas movie. I just don't think of it that it's way. It's funny because and Batman Returns Christmas it's in your face. Yeah, it's re- it's really in your face. It just doesn't feel. I don't know why. You're right. I agree. Watch that it doesn't it doesn't feel like a Christmas movie. Um, maybe because the whole concept, see, this is the, actually the perfect argument for a different show because we're a video game show. But anyway, <laughs> it's a perfect argument for what constitutes a Christmas movie. The plot of Batman Returns isn't about Christmas. Batman is not technically saving Christmas. He's saving Gotham from the Penguin. It's just that the backdrop for the movie is Christmas. Mm-hmm. In Die Hard, the whole purpose of the movie is John McClane is trying to get home to spend Christmas with his family, with his estranged wife and children. So the actual plot driv- is driven by the fact that John McClane wants to come home for Christmas. Batman doesn't want to come home for Christmas. It just so <laughs> happens to be it happens to be Christmas in Gotham and you know and the penguin shows up and is causing trouble and Batman has to save the day. So that's how you differentiate a Christmas movie from a movie that has Christmas in it. I like it. I like it. And that, you know, you know Batman's going to be very lonely on Christmas. So Well, Bat- yeah, of course he is cuz he has no parents. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, no presents under the tree for Batman. Oof. Ouch. Well, um, maybe maybe Alfred bought him a pair of socks. <laughs> but anyway, there was a Batman Returns video game, which heavily involved the Christmas theme because yep. of the film. Uh, and it was basically just a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. Much um, like Final Fight. Yeah, very similar to Final have Fight. You, have you played it? Uh, if I did, it was a really long time ago, and I don't remember. I The game is awesome, I got to admit. Oh, okay. I, I, I bought it last, last year. Um, it, it's the game. It's smooth. It play, you know, it plays like Final Fight, like Maximum Carnage, all those types of games. Definitely and well worth it. Those games are awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, wait. If you can find it, definitely pick it up for the Super Nintendo. I don't know how well, the Nintendo version works. I don't know, but I want the Super Nintendo one just because. After reading this, uh, I want to hear 16-bit Danny Elfman soundtrack <laughs> uh, in the game. I think you already know what that would sound like. Oh yeah, but I gotta hear it. So next up, now this, I never, I mean, I've heard of the game. I just never realized it was Christmas because I never played it. Uh, James Pond 2, codename Robocod, a.k.a. Super James Pond. Uh, James Pond was a series that actually survived for a while. It did. There um, were it was, quite a few. Yeah, it was a, you know, a bit of a platformer. Uh, it takes, you know, it's, a, it's a, a spoof of James Bond, but James Pond, you're some sort of fish or amphibian or a... Uh, what is that thing that's um, uh, I forgot what they call it. Mud skipper, you know that lives yeah. in the land and water. Um, yes. But this version is it takes place during Christmas. It, you know you really can't. It's 
you're insane. Um, the villain, Dr. <laughs> I forgot about this guy's name. Dr. Maybe. Dr. Maybe. <laughs> has taken over Santa's workshop and held everyone hostage. Boy, Santa can't get you a break sometimes. Now, let me tell you something. Maybe Santa should look into some type of security system. Maybe he should build a wall, something. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, apparently, yeah, Santa can't keep people away from, you know, invading the North Pole. Nope, not at all. Uh, but this is very straightforward. It's a platformer, 50 levels. Um, it's just fun to play. Uh, and it's got, you know, it's totally during Christmas. So definitely check it out when you can. Yes. Um, and then the last the last one that I just want to throw out there um, is one that I um, I did not know about before today. And I want – just from reading it, I want to get it because I'm an uber fan of the Tim Burton film, Nightmare, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. I love that, love that movie. Um, and I did not know that on PlayStation 2 they released a game called The Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge. I think I remember that. Yeah. So that one I, I don't remember. And – there was and there was another Nightmare Before Christmas game called uh, Nightmare Before Christmas Pumpkin King as well. But Oogie's Revenge, what's interesting about this game is, yes, it was made for a younger audience, so it's not exactly a very um, complicated game. But they they say the gameplay in it is very similar to Devil May Cry, and I love the Devil May Cry series. Ooh. So just that in and of itself um, makes it interesting to me. Uh, and on top of it, the, the gameplay consists of 24 chapters where you're fighting different enemies, solving puzzles and everything like that. And then you got letter grades at the end based on how you perform. Mm -hmm. But um, and then they have the doors to the different holiday worlds and like just basically everything out of the film. Um, and it got it got decent reviews as well. I mean, not not stellar, stellar, but it got like, you know, seven out of ten type of stuff. Oh, that's not bad. So, yeah, and for so for PlayStation Two, so I definitely like this is like out of all the games that we've been talking about that are Christmas related, I go this is the one now that I want to go out and pick up uh, <laughs> this year. This year, you know, uh, and, I didn't uh, realize this plays like uh, Devil May Cry. I'm in, now I'm intrigued. Yeah, I'm not see, even crazy I, about the movie. Yeah, see, oh shame on you. I never, I never, I don't know, I just never, I won't, I don't think Tim Burton's weird, but I just never got into a night, Nightmare Before Christmas. Well. Because yeah, I'm not into Halloween, yeah, I, that's why. Well, yeah, well, and there's also an argument of, is Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? And the answer is it's both. Um, it's just, it's a fusing of the mm. holidays together. I said, uh, I'd, I'd consider it a Christmas movie. I, I don't know. Uh, well, I, it's definitely, to me, it's more of a Christmas movie than it is a Halloween movie. Okay. I, I agree with that. Um, when it was released in theaters, though, I think it came out in like July or something like that. It was like, it was <laughs> just in time for the Independence Day uh, rush. <laughs> exactly, but yeah, but that that game actually sounds like something I've never played, uh, and I definitely would like to. So um, yeah, just fun, fun all around. Cool. Well, oh. and that, folks, is basically your uh, the the top go to uh, Christmas games, at least in our opinions. So and and a list. So. Yeah, our opinions are a list that we found online. <laughs> and that um, just makes up everything. So, it, it, uh, it does. And what, yes. we thought, what we thought was going to be a short episode, not as short. But you know what? It's Christmas. Maybe it's time to let you guys go. Let you guys and gals go back to your families. Uh-oh. Oh, that's right. You yes. really can't see this at this point. but No, my, my, my cat wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. Aw. Merry Christmas from Snow. The friendlier cat. I Yes, right? And her name is Snow, so she fits for Christmas. Aw. Right. Oh, keep it. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> She's done. She's got her, uh, her She's sag done. talk. She's like, what the hell here. did you just do to me? <laughs> uh, all right, so let, pick me up. let's wrap this up then and let everyone get back to their uh, yes. their fruitcakes and whatnot. When this, epi when this episode drops, Larry, um, I will already be in New York. Yes. And, and next, next week's episode, which is our New Year's episode... Yes, we're gonna. It's gonna drop on New Year's Day. Yep, we're gonna be start, starting 2019 off with a bang, uh, and I say with a bang literally because the New Year's episode will be the culmination <laughs> of our 2018 contest. Yep. Where for those of you who are just tuning in, um, Larry and I 
had a bet going all year thanks to Josh from Victims and Villains. I'll never forget it. Right. The person who spent the most money buying retro video games this year, which is not a bad thing. Nope, not at all. The person who spent the most money buying retro video games uh, in 2018 had to buy the other person uh, a virtual boy. Yep. And... Obviously, Larry has been wanting a Virtual Boy forever. Long time. Very long time, ever since he lost his previous one. Yeah. Um, and, and we all know the the VB Sucks campaign that's been going on uh, <laughs> on, our, on, our, on our page, uh, that, on our podcast for like a year. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, yes, thank you, Charlie, for, for pushing that on. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the culmination of this will be next week where Larry and I reveal how much money we've spent buying retro video games in 2018 – Larry would very much like the Virtual Boy so he can cherish it and play it for the 10 hours that it will actually work before it dies. <laughs> um, Anthony, on the other hand, would like to win the Virtual Boy because should he win it, he will be destroying it on live stream. I mean – And I, I haven't chosen my weapon yet, but this isn't going to be a simple I'm going to step on it type of thing. You know, the Grinch – nor Krampus is this cold during the holiday seasons. Oh, I know. Let me tell you something. My heart is 20 sizes too small for this one. <laughs> and I am going to revel every moment of it uh, should I win. And I'm fairly confident that I'm going to win. <laughs> and I still have hopes. I still believe in a Christmas miracle that will happen. Yes. yes. You, well, if you can, if you manage since next week is still 2018 – if you can dangle some really expensive retro games in front of me that make me spend that money, you have a chance. Well, I, you know, I may have to, since you're going to be in New York, I may have to, uh, as, as kind as you were to bring me to all the, the great spots out in L.A., uh, Game Realm, Game Dude, all of them, um, I may just have to bring you to my oasis in the sand and... Yeah. Uh, finally introduce you to Game On, where I think... Yeah, well, why, I, why do I have a feeling, though, that you'll still wind up spending more money there when we're there? <laughs> if you're listening now, Tristan, don't let me buy anything. Tristan? Don't take my card. the store. Sell him the whole <laughs> store. He could have at some point during this year, I feel like. Um, yeah, I think so. So, yeah, actually, uh, uh, all joking aside, I'm actually quite excited for you to, to check out Game On. Um, after all uh, this whole year of talking am, about it, I am looking forward to it. And uh, in advance, I would like to thank the fellows over at Game On who are who are basically going to be hosting us next week. Yeah, that's kind enough. And yes. um, also next week, we're going to have a special guest on. We'll save that. Um, you know, just what I'd like to do to kick off the new year. Yes, with this guy. And I think it's fantastic, especially for that for, that, for this specific episode. <laughs> I don't even want to know what he has conjured up for us in 2019. Um, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. As long as he's wearing clothes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, folks, thank you very much for joining us here on this Christmas edition of the show. Uh, of course, remember, everywhere, just everywhere, we're going to make this easy. Retro Gamers Podcast, basically. Uh, if you can't find us there, it means we're not on that platform. And yep. um, wherever you listen to podcasts, do a search for the Retro Gamers Podcast. And uh, hit him with the website and the email. Yeah, you can uh, find us at uh, www.theretrogamers.com, and you can email us at uh, email at theretrogamers.com. Uh, and on behalf of myself and my campaign to destroy a virtual boy, I wish <laughs> all of you a very Merry Christmas. And if you do not celebrate Christmas, a very happy holidays. Or, you know, if I, if you want to be all-encompassing, a very Merry Christmas Kwanzaa. <laughs> And um, I'm going to wish everyone a Merry Christmas because that's today when we drop. Yep. Um, Happy New Year because technically we're going to be back in the new year. So uh, hopefully you had a good time for New Year's Eve. And uh, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for joining us on this road as we continue on because we will catch you right here next year on the Retro Gamers Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>